of plain language is letting go. So that is the hard part. But once you do it, then start raising your sensitivity there to what might someone else not know what you're really talking about that. We did a great job. Let's try one more. Pick one. Anyone. What other word do you want to work on? Pardon? Tested positive. Tested. Oh, that, why do we say that? Tested positive. <laughs> This is where the technical jargon comes. Tested positive, layman will not understand. I mean, okay, if you are going uh, continuously for this, then you will know. Otherwise, plain and simple language, if you say, the, uh, whatever within the tolerance, you are positive for this particular disease. And, and isn't it a strange term? Because it sounds like, ta-da, that's good, I'm positive. <laughs> but it doesn't mean good news, it means bad news. Happy Yes. It, 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 why we do this to language, I don't know, but we do. Yes? If I say tested positive, I be of this concern, it would be good news. It would be good news for you, yes. If I said tested positive for diabetes, I would bad news. It would be bad news, yes, yes. So you know what, with the uh, wonderful examples, it could be good. In India, tested positive could also mean that you really need <laughs> it's what? I'm missing that one. That the tests were positively done. <laughs> this is harder than I thought. <laughs> okay. The tests have been done. The tests. <laughs> <laughs> Tested positively, it's either really good news or really bad news or the lab was okay. <laughs> so how do you... <laughs> give me a sentence. Just give me an example, please, of how this would be used. I read this somewhere. Give me an example of how this might have actually been used. Okay, we can say that... You just tested your, your HIV test and it's come out positive. I mean, you, the idea that you're trying to convey is that whatever the patient had come to you for, like if a patient has come for hepatitis B or hepatitis C, and I is aware that it could be either B or C. So we can say that we were suspecting hepatitis B, mm -hmm. but sadly it's still positive. Okay. So and you use. You used the word sadly, so you gave some context to it. You talked about context, too, whether it's getting pregnant, when you, that's what you most want in this world, or it's whether you have some disease that you really don't want to have. So those are the things, that's what makes plain language writing hard. I just want to tell you, I've been doing this for years, but I also like doing puzzles. I love doing crossword puzzles. I don't know who else here likes to do word puzzles or things. I find that this is a real puzzle to figure out what's wrong and come up with a clear way to word it. It's hard, and when you begin doing it, it takes much longer and it's much harder than it gets over time. It does get easier. So I don't know, does anyone want to try an example of how you might restate tested positive? Well, what would you two say? It's good news. Well, how would you two? You <laughs> get your patient's status. No, the test is positive. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the reason for that is because we counseled them before they've done, done the test. And once you do the test, this is what the results are going to be. And if it's so much, it's, that means it's negative. And if it's so much, it's going to be positive. So they're not dependent on me to interpret the result for them. Okay. They already know that it's either going to be. So we're trying to prepare them even before the result comes, rather than wait till after. Because then the problem is once you get a result, then you wait for the doctor to get back to you. And then you have all that suspense and you don't know what the level means or whether it's good or bad. And the doctor may be on holiday or anything else. Whereas here, if you've told the patient in advance that this is what we expect, 
then I think it's that much easier and then the patients, and it helps me to confirm that the patient understood. You know, suppose the patient says, you know, my test is positive and actually it's not, that means I didn't do a good job explaining to her uh -huh. in the first place what a positive. So the next patient I counsel, perhaps I'll do it. Good. So it's really that education is just key and so that goes together with the plain language. So thank you for all that. That's just an example of how hard it is. It's easier to say that you are tested to be outside the normal limits. Tested positive is outside the normal limits. Limits for the healthy. You could. That's another way of explaining that the person is out of these limits, so not healthy. But for someone who might have trouble with math, a lot of people have trouble kind of is without the normal limits. Is that a term that you learn in advanced math? Or is that a term that somebody with a primary school education might understand? What do you, I know you've done work with people at all literacy levels in Tulane. We actually, uh, you know, positive is a term that's used for certain tests, like strep and pregnancy, HIV, those kind of things, but we got away from you know using positive or negative because it's so uh, subjective. Mm -hmm. uh, we instead started using normal and not normal. Oh, okay. and I think that is accepted. Yeah. You know, even people with low literacy or non-English speaking uh, mm -hmm. people tend to understand that better than my experience. Good, thank you. In our hospital, we use the term of universal precautions. So. If the person is tested positive for HIV and if he's coming in the operation theater, there is a placard put on the uh, door of the operation theater, mm -hmm. a universal precautions. Mm -hmm. So it's not announced that uh, he's HIV positive. Oh, okay. All right. So the personnel who is in direct contact, hands on with that patient, knows that uh, universal precautions have to be taken while dealing with that patient. So in that situation, the person doesn't even need to know positive or negative. Um, I mean, that's a different issue. They're going to see you for knee surgery. Yeah, uh, for an orthopedic uh, surgery, yeah. uh, patient knows, uh, and the anesthetist, they have discussed with him. This is uh, more to deal with the healthcare personnel. OK. So that they, rather than term patient HIV positive, which is a very bad label to uh, <coughs> It's universal precaution, so it could be <coughs> FB or HIV or any of the communicable diseases which need precautions. So okay. we enter with eyeglasses and... Uh, so that's interesting. That's some one case that's actually to use those words and use more jargon because that's what you need in that situation. Yeah, but then using those words which have more of jargon probably for healthcare professional is fine. Then we are giving, trying to convey the message to a Well, the jargon is among ourselves, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not to the patient. It's not for the patient. Right. Yeah. So that's a difference. Some is for the patient. You did your education. You put it into context. You use normal, not normal. You might use within outside limits. There's no rules. What the key part is, is that you test it with your readers. Yes? Just for a layman, wouldn't it be OK just to say you have the symptoms of the disease? Th that's what I was thinking, too. Why not say just say you're not healthy? No, but they come to the So it shows that you're not healthy. Yeah, but a positive pregnancy <laughs> test, a positive oh. pregnancy test, how can you say that you're not healthy? No, no. How no. Could, 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 there's a context. Again, there is a context. Could, could you just say you have cancer? Yeah. You have diabetes? Yeah. Yes. I agree that things have to be taken in context. As in pregnancy case, you have to say this is a positive or negative. But today in pathology labs, we are not using tested positive for serology, particularly HIV, HPS, cover, and uh, like uh, beta, media. Instead, we use the term reactive or non-reactive. Okay. Because general people don't understand these words. But positive, negative, everybody understands. And they sometimes hype it up. So it is the clinician's prerogative to explain to the patient if he died reactive, what is the situation. So it remains only between the clinician and his patient.
Thank you. And then I'd go back to your point of just doing that education. And if reactive, not reactive are the key words, then you have to explain them, positive, negative, you have normal, not normal. There's a range. That's why, that's the art part. But, uh, I, get but I, I wish to add, you know, I've seen many cases I mean, all over Bombay and India also. I've seen reports where it's written CRF. A patient is not even aware that they've got chronic renal failure. And the creatinine is seven. And the, the doctors have not thought it fit to inform the patient that you've got CRF. And we just write CRF, is written, and creatinine is seven. And the patient, la la la, I'm drinking water, I'm enjoying protein, I'm having chicken. And I say, you're suffering from chronic renal failure, and you're a fourth stage or fifth stage kidney failure. So I think what is missing is we are not giving, not we, the doctors are not spelling it out in black and white. That you have chronic renal failure, chronic renal failure means kidney failure. Don't say renal because he's uneducated. You should say, Aapki kidney kharaab ho gaya, aapko dhyan rakhna hai. I get patients who my doctor ne bola, aap 10 liter pani pe. You know, that sort of thing. And that's what, just remember what it's like from the reader's perspective. I just want to tell you that I have these booklets here. I'm going to end up leave, giving them to Anju for the health library. But you're welcome to look at these later. I worked with the National Cancer Institute in the US writing a lot of materials in plain language. These are some of the most widely read books. And they have won, actually, plain language awards where we put together this information. Uh, one is radiation therapy in you. One is chemotherapy in you, and one is eating hints before, during, and after cancer treatment. You can see, if you want to look at these later, examples about putting some really hard information into plain language. It is possible to do it. Let's move on to sentences, because that's an important part. So sentences, there's a little worksheet on page five. But basically, in sentences, what you want there's no magic absolute number of how many words to have in a sentence, but ideally you would have maybe up to 15 or 20. I actually like to mix in a few very short sentences too, so it's not all so choppy, it's a little easier to read. What you really want to do is make sure that you have one main idea and one main action in that sentence. Don't have all those punctuation. Don't have all those commas and semicolons and idea after idea after idea. In smushed, do you know the word smushed? How about this? <laughs> In plain language? In plain language. All put together. This is it. This works. Gestures. My husband said I use my hands too much. Um, but, you know, you just put things and you just wait a long time to get that period. That might work when you're writing beautiful prose for your novel, but that's not what we're doing here. So you want to make your point, you want to use an active voice. An active voice identifies who is doing the action. The opposite is a passive voice. Active voice is Pat is baking the cake. Passive is a cake is being baked. It doesn't even identify who it is. It's harder to read, it's harder to understand, and it never lets you know who is doing the action. You, um, a th something I notice in a lot of health materials uh, are sentences that have a lot of if and then in them. Do you see those in your materials? If this happens, then this happens. And if this happens, then that happens. I think that's because that's what healthcare is about. It's a lot of it is based on this condition or that condition. But it's a hard sentence to read, especially if you start off with if da 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 da, comma, then da 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 da, period. That the person who's not a strong reader needs to understand all that stuff with the if. And then they need to understand all that stuff with the then, and they have to put it together. That's harder to do. I like to say things, like the sentence might be, if, it's, if it will rain, then bring an umbrella. I think it's easier to say, it may rain, period, bring an umbrella. 
So there are times you can get rid of those if-thens. You can't always get rid of those if-thens. Um, we don't all agree. I like to do the action first, like bring an umbrella because it may rain. So I like to say the action 